Today we're gonna create some content in VR. So let's get cracking. Whoa! Today, I'm gonna to be playing Color Space on the Oculus, and if you've never heard of Color Space before, it is a game that is like taking a picture book and bringing it into virtual reality. So, I'm gonna try it for the first time right now. Get in there, buddy. Start. All right, here we go. I'm ready, I'm excited for this. Oh, really? I've never done it. Where are my hands? All right, let's go into this ladybug looking thing. Whoa, it's like a pop-up book. Like Jupiter rings going around the whole thing. Let's see if I can color that in first. Whoa. Green sky. I want the moon to be made out of cheese. Whee! I just painted the ladybug. Heck yeah. Wow, the way the color fills in is so cool. This is a pathway to a man-made psychedelic trip here. I can get really close to the trees. I wish there was a way I could like move. <gasps> Whoa. Yeah. I'm moving. Ah! Hey, maybe when I make a video, that's something I could do where I, uh, I paint the entire sky at, at once. Oh yeah, that's trippy. Oh, I think I'm done. I can't wait to make a video about this. <laughs> I'm just admiring my handiwork. Okay. Time to make a video. <laughs> I have the inspiration from the game itself. I'm gonna then take the idea, turn in some rough drawings. I'll hand that off to Austin. Here's me throwing it over to Austin and see what he can do with it. For a lot of the... Oh, okay. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> that one went fly. <laughs> For a lot of videos we've been making this year, uh, they've involved sets that we've built. So for this video in particular, I'm basically gonna be putting the Oculus on my head and this back wall falls down revealing this 3D world that I will be coloring in. So uh, let's get to it. Anything's possible if you put your mind to it. Yeah. Here's the storyboard I created for this video. So I walk into the room and I pick up the Oculus and I put it on. And then as I do, the world around me changes. The room opens up, revealing this black and white forest that I'm in. I now have paint brushes instead of controllers and I'm, I'm painting everything around me. And then eventually I hit the ground with it and an explosion of color goes out. And then you just see me standing in the forest. I'm excited. Let's go do it. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, action. Now! How was that? Oh. Oh, that looks great. That's crazy. That does look, yeah, that's crazy. We finished what we needed with this, so we gotta break it down to get on to the next part of the video. Slide. Just like that, she's gone. Here's what remains. Action. Breathe. Oh. Ah! This will be the cue to back up. Woo. So it'll be like, boom, boom, like that. And then I'll cut to another shot. Action. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, and then let's just grab a few close-ups of hands. So come on. Yeah. That one is the best one. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh, oh, it's just getting better and better. <laughs> that's good. I think we got everything we needed. Time to bring it to the edit. See how it feels. You make it work. All right. Let's jump into the edit. For the very first shot, I have to first do a 3D motion track of the entire scene. Once I got the good 3D track, I went ahead and made 3D planes at different parts for like the walls, the floor, the couch. I then used an instance of the grid effect on the different layers. And what this did is it gave it a very digitized wireframe kind of look. I then used Red Giant's optical glow and this helped give it a overall brighter, more vibrant feeling to it. And then I took the first mask I made, I inverted it and then I offset it by two frames. And what this did is it gave it a very scan line kind of effect. So the digital lines kind of shoot out from my feet and they go all the way up the walls and they don't stay put in the center though, they are consistently pushing out the entire time. This could also be accomplished using Blender. I just happened to do it in After Effects, probably took longer than it needed to, but meh. 
Once the grid lines got to the back wall, I went ahead and used an instance of Saber to add the glowing lines that go up the back wall that go from blue to green when it's time for the wall to fall down. You'll notice that initially there was a little bit above the green screen that we couldn't just key. So for this, I just masked the wall and then hand animated the mask down. Once the wall was over the green, I just used different forms of chroma keying to, to accomplish the rest. I personally like composite brush a lot because of how fine tuned and how precise it is, but you could also use things like Primat Keyer from Red Giant, or of course the built-in Key Light 2. Once this was done, I simply added a white plane in the background, and I went ahead and added a bloom effect over the whole thing. I did this by using Super Comp from Red Giant over the composition of me in the foreground and the white background, and it kind of gave it this nice white blooming effect uh, just to really show that it was overexposed and purely brightness outside the room. Now that the wall has fallen down, I want to create the world that we're going to be seeing in this digital environment. It's going to be a forest with a beautiful blue sky, kind of at a cliff is, is what I was going for. Purple mountains. I didn't want the details to be anything realistic. I wanted it to feel true to the game, which is very low poly, very low geometry. To create the initial landscape to look like a cliff, I actually just used the landscape plugin inside of Blender to create this. They have a bunch of different variety of options for an initial shape. And then from there, I went ahead and just tweaked the look until it was something I was happy with. Next up, creating the grass blades. How I did this is I just created one or two different grass blades. I then used a particle system with a random rotation and I went ahead and populated the whole scene with it. Now, because I wanted to have a very cartoony feel to this, I couldn't let the grass blades be too small. Otherwise, it would look way too overpopulated or the lines would look too congested. So instead, I did a much sparser set of grass. Next up, I did a very similar thing for the trees. I found a low poly tree I liked that I could download and I went ahead and tweaked it a little bit to match the setting I had, and then I populated the entire scene with that tree. The exact same thing for the rocks. And then using vertex groups, I was actually able to just paint out the areas I didn't want trees to exist for me to have a nice opening where I would be standing in the video. With the second shot, I also had to start with motion tracking. This time I actually used synth eyes to accomplish the track. I'm actually very new to Synthize. I have rarely used it. Out the box, just using the default tracker, I got an incredible track. While I first tried to do this track in After Effects and was having a lot of issues, if you want to spend the money on it, it's definitely worthwhile. When I was happy with the track I had, I brought it over to Blender and I positioned the camera so that I would be in the scene where I wanted to be when I brought in the clip of me. To cut myself out, the same exact thing, I just created a very simple garbage mat around me, tracked it ever so slightly in the scene, and then chroma keyed anything inside of that mask with, again, another instance of composite brush. Now, I wanted to create this effect where I go from a digital wireframe world to the, the properly rendered 3D world. And to accomplish this, I simply set the scene to object mode and made sure wireframes were turned on and set to the color and the liking that I wanted. I then went and did a viewport render, and that's actually how I got this look right here. Now, with the world complete, let's take a little break and see what Quinn's up to. I'm gonna be working on the music for this video. My process basically of doing that is I use a bunch of sample instruments since I'm one person, basically like I'm one man orchestra with my MIDI keyboard. Kind of thinking of the temple theme in Smash Bros, forming that into what we have here. When the brushes are formed, I kind of have this voice of just like a very airy exhale, just a <sighs> It's mixed with like a leaf movement sound just to give it the, the foliage feel, a little a suction just to give it the little <clears throat> And the laser beam, that was a thing requested by Caleb just to give it a more sci-fi feel. So together it's <sighs> a brushy, magical, and sci-fi all at the same time. That's the magic of layering. Honestly, the most interesting aspect to this for me was just trying to figure out what sounds to use for the brush strokes. You can see that it's a cymbal, then a fast one. I did the wind chimes with the birds because they seemed a little bit more magical and wind chimes always give you that feeling of magic. Now next was the audio. Now that was interesting because the music is already taking up so much space. Some things compete with each other. Like actually here at the end with this ground hit, I had a timpani roll originally, but the thing is I also wanted a very rumble sound. So I just literally got, got rid of the timpani roll and the music part. The tempo is decreasing at that point, just so that it can have that downbeat right at the ground hit. We've got some goose noises. Jordan has a wonderful talent of tweeting like a bird. So we took that audio and we put it in the intro to this YouTube video. So if you go back and listen, you can hear Jordan tweeting. Overall, I think that the audio and music aspects complement each other, but really that's it. To create the effect of it blowing up from one spot to the rest of the scene, I actually used an instance of the Boolean tool on a sphere that I animated from a small size 
till it filled the entire scene. I used the exact same effect for the rendered version that I had later. You'll notice for everything in Blender, I went with this very heavy black outlined look to match the look of color space, which if you remember has a very thick stroke mark. I mimicked that look inside of Blender. And then I realized as I brought myself into the shot as well, I kind of wanted to mimic the look with myself. So to do this, I literally just duplicated myself, set a simple choke to reverse so that it actually gave me an outline and set the fill to black. Now for the transition of me wearing the headset and holding the handles to me holding paintbrushes with nothing on my face, Austin came in and replaced everything on me. But the takes weren't perfect, they weren't matching up exactly right. So I had to use um, a bit of puppet tooling to, to kind of match the two takes as best as I could and then use different types of masks wiping for, for the transition from one to the other. I also had to do a little bit of extra keyframing as far as the position scale and rotation. Um, but overall, it looked pretty good. And to hide a little bit more of the imperfection, I actually added a blue scan line, just like the world around me, to my hands and to my face, which were the two most obvious transition moments. I then went over to Production Crate and grabbed a very cool, magical pixie dust kind of explosion, and I added it to my hands just to add another level of fantasy to it. Now for the next few shots, the camera is mostly still, and I am simply doing different actions, whether that be painting something close up or a wide shot of me painting something. I rendered out still frames from each one of these shots and I brought them over to Blender. I then matched the camera and Blender as best I could to each one of those frames. And when I did that, I was actually able to render out just a single photo and use that as the background for the, the assets I already had of me painting. For the transition from black and white to color, I animated a mask from wherever the paintbrush would hit to where it ended. Once we've established how the paintbrush works, for the rest of the world, whenever a paintbrush hits something, I would simply just have the color explode from wherever the paintbrush was to the rest of it. Now for the shot of me painting the birds as they fly overhead, I actually found a flock of birds on Sketchfab that I could buy, and then all I had to do is import the flock of birds and then parent it to an empty that I could animate across the sky. For this final shot, as I hit the ground, there's a shockwave of color out to the rest of the scene. This time, I took the tracking data not only to Blender for the 3D world, but also to After Effects to create 2D masks that I could place in Z space. Is this space? What does that sound? I don't know. It sounds so weird. I then create a mask for different elements, such as the trees, or the rock in the foreground, or the ground plane itself. These masks are going to be used for the transition from black and white to color. That being said, I created a second mask to all these different planes that was set to intersect, and I had that animating out in a radial fashion. What this does is wherever the first and the second mask intersect, that's where the color version is going to live uh, until it fills out whatever that mask is, whether it be the trees, the sky, the foreground, whatever. I took all the layers, pre-composed them, duplicated it, offset it by a frame and this would give me that scan line effect once again using optical glow for an added sense of vibrancy an added sense of pow magic i don't know an added pizzazz to really sell the impact of this effect, I went ahead and added some digital camera shake by having the whole shot punched in slightly more than it was on set. I was able to add a layer of dust as well as a layer of particles that shoot up as the paintbrush hits the ground. Now, here's why it's important to shoot for the edit for videos like this that you want to loop. I actually started the first shot facing the picture frame on the set and then revealed the Oculus from there. I shot that intentionally knowing that was going to be the end of the video once we get to this moment. I used the tracking data from Mocha and I applied it to that final shot so that it would move with the picture frame as it left frame. Okay, so after all of that, here is the final video. And that's gonna wrap us up on this video. If you wanna see more content like it, make sure you like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Most likely. No, I'll be here. I'll be here. I'm not gonna go anywhere. I know I'm leaving right now, but I'll, I'll be here for the next video.